it feels weird to me that I didn't want to do this fitness transformation in the first place when you know I was younger for seven or eight years I spent two hours a day in the gym with the dream of being a bodybuilder and yeah back then I was naive I didn't realize you had to do steroids but eventually that sense got knocked into my head and I realized you know natural bodybuilding wasn't making me happy uh, you know it was kind of pointless so you know for me to come back and visit it you know it was really just for the potential growth of my YouTube channel I said hey I'm doing diet nutrition if I really pull through on this fitness stuff and use the knowledge and the muscle memory how could I not grow my channel but during the last year and a half over the course of this transformation I've learned more and more that the content on your channel doesn't typically matter when you're not in their club and since I'm not in their club nor will I ever be you know if I try to mimic them do what they do look as good as them say the same things it's not guaranteed to work and, and by that I mean you know someone who's in shape that seems to know what they're talking about in the context of fitness and I've arguably made the most impressive natural transformation over the last year that has been done on YouTube I mean if there's someone else let me know and I don't see it being possible you know who else spent seven eight years bodybuilding then took five years off and then just blew up and, and got everything back from a natural perspective you know I went from people calling me a skinny fairy boy ooh, to accusing me of steroids which is a comically drastic difference but that negativity of those people stayed and my channel never really grew at all and I mean that is partially due to what's going on in the world but I've seen other fitness channels in this same period of time get double triple 10 times 20 times as many subscribers go from unknown to hundreds of thousands while I've stagnated this whole transformation started back in September 2018 before you know what and <laughs> I mean if I knew that was gonna happen I probably wouldn't have done this you know everyone gets locked inside all gyms are closed you know people are worried about putting food on the table not getting you know 17 inch arms working out especially bodybuilding is not a life priority when other things come in so that certainly has a lot to do with it also with what I know about Wi-Fi now uh, the levels in gyms definitely not ideal to be in that environment for one or two hours per day I mean if you wore protective clothing maybe it's not the end of the world and I'm certainly not wearing a mask in the gym playing along with that nonsense but even before this nonsense happened to lock us inside before the sheeple were locked inside bodybuilding and fitness you know were questionable things compared to how many people in the world are suffering not in great spots you know I thought if I became more popular with the fitness content anything that I could do to grow my channel get the word out there I could help more people make people happier put them in you know better lives but it became unfortunately obvious that people weren't coming to my channel despite me looking as good as a lot of other influencers and providing educational fitness content with unique ideas I mean it's quite obvious that someone in charge isn't too happy about some of the topics I've talked about and I'm definitely not favorable on the algorithm and there are gang stalkers groups of paid people trying to gaslight and discredit my fitness information you know when in reality I look as good if not better than most fitness influencers on YouTube and you know the information I talk about has been said by IFBB pros classic bodybuilding legends and I get crucified yet those people are praised and these attacks on my exercise form are just a straw man argument considering I've never done a demonstrational video on how to perform an exercise properly you know I've even explained the reason I do exercises one way as opposed to others you know those same gang stalkers started the false steroid accusations you know plastering my videos with comments trying to discredit me justifying the low view count you know it's kind of like rubbing salt in the wound not only are they you know making sure I don't get new viewers 
they're also trying to paint me in a bad light. And I mean, it's completely ridiculous as I'm the only person I know as a natural that has taken a drug test on YouTube. You know, those same gang stalkers, people that are being paid are spamming other channels, people in the club with positive supporting comments. Ridiculous stuff that people would never say. Oh, you're so smart and handsome. I would love to be like just ridiculous stuff. Go on the comments of any popular YouTube channel and read through them and see if you think those comments are real or not. Again, you know, they create a fake illusion of reality that a lot of people do go along with. If you say something enough times, people are going to take it as the truth and not even enough times. If you say it first, if you fire the first shot on a larger platform, you generally are in the winning position. I mean, I could talk trash about the fitness community all day. You know, we can't forget the fake natties. You know, I get a real sour taste in my mouth when all of these juice head monkeys ooh, ooh, are getting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views per video. Now, I really don't think that many of their viewers use steroids. You know, a lot of United States people, steroids are illegal. So I figured there would be a market in the natural bodybuilding context. And I guess that's why the gang stalkers tried making one part of their agenda accusing me of steroids. Kind of removing my main marketing tool by firing the gun first. And I'm sure a lot of other natural bodybuilders that weren't in the club had these same false steroid accusations just because of uh, you know, a whole bunch of stuff I don't want to get into. But once you think about it, most fitness influencers are fake naturals and the steroid users typically prevail in the context of success. You know, I put in seven, eight years of really intense weightlifting and the muscle memory helped me get that back. But if you wanted to look like me from scratch with the average routine, even if you took steroids, it would take you two to three years. And regardless of how you look naturally, that face value marketing of an enhanced physique seems substantial. And all of those enhanced physiques are claiming they're natural. The biggest factor personally is probably how unhealthy and unrealistic bodybuilding is. You know, lifting weights requires a larger caloric intake. I seemed to handle this a lot better when I was younger before I took Accutane, had the iron overload, all the digestive issues. Even just three or four years ago, uh, when I did a little stint uh, to do the 2015 NPC Mid-Atlantic Natural Classic, I was handling it a lot better. Now my liver's messed up, my digestion's messed up. The body has priorities when it's trying to build muscle. And with these gut issues, you know, my liver being a chunk of iron, I think I have to take a break for two to three years and just hope that I can eat normal food again because the way things have been the past few years, I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to eat normally for the rest of my life. And I really need to be able to incorporate fasting, different styles of training, you know, get out in the woods, grounding, hiking, increase gut motility, be as healthy as possible, something not parallel to bodybuilding. You know, on top of not exactly being conducive to healthy, even the way I'm doing it, bodybuilding is so time consuming. An extra hour or two per day of eating, two hours of working out, and then what really kills me is I have to sleep like four to five hours in the middle of the day because the meals make me so tired. Honestly, if the meals didn't make me so tired, I could probably do it. I'm really enjoying the extra few hours per day I have to do things. You know, I haven't even had time to clean my room over the past year in a reasonable, you know, frequency. And as I grow my businesses over the next year or two, I really need to be more hands-on and more involved and focus on that more as opposed to this, which isn't getting me anything. You know, I, I broke even from a monetary perspective for the past year and a half on all of this fitness stuff. Uh, probably not broke even considering the time investment. But you know, the difference between working out a few times a week, going to the park, uh, and normal food volume is so drastic when you compare it to a bodybuilder. And, and there's a reason people say bodybuilding is a full-time job. It's certainly not for most working people. And honestly, in, in my ideal world, I would just play with my girlfriend like half an hour in the morning and half an hour at night, and that would be my workout. And uh, oh, we'll save those stories for another time. <laughs> I'll have, I got so many good stories to tell when I'm older and I just don't care. Uh, so, so there's a few more reasons adding fuel to the fire 
Uh, a big one was my gynecomastia surgery, which is where they uh, remove uh, female breast tissue from the nipples. And even before I had that surgery, uh, I was unhappy with my chest genetics. After getting the surgery, there wasn't any gynecomastia in there. It was just like naturally how my nipples looked. That was just the genetic development. And it's definitely hampering your marketing, you know, when you don't have ideal muscle insertions and you take your shirt off and people say weird stuff about your chest. Uh, and I've always been 100% natural, but that gyno definitely relates to uh, gender boundaries and heavy steroid usage. You know, especially the images of females who do take large amounts of steroids, all of the wacko, daco, cracko stuff going on that I don't want to get into. <laughs> and listen, you guys might be having fun all muscled out in the sauna, and I don't have a problem with boys wearing sports bras and short shorts as long as they tell me first. But these fitness influencers don't seem to be telling anyone, and I'd like to disassociate myself with that uh, as much as possible. The lack of transparency, the dishonesty. I mean, I'm sure it's easy for all of these people to just you know, get paid a fat check and pretend like everything's okay, but um, uh, I guess some people have to have some integrity, right? Uh, so thank you guys for joining me. I don't know what fitness content I'll be doing in the future, but I haven't really worked out the past four or five days. I've just done some pull-ups and push-ups, and I'm sure if I just did pull-ups and push-ups, I would maintain most of my muscle mass, but uh, that's probably a bad idea because I would still have to eat that large volume of food and I've still had to eat you know, large amounts of food the past few days because I haven't shed the muscle yet. Once I shed that extra muscle, the 10, 15, 20 pounds, whatever it is, then my caloric intake can be reduced. Right now, you know, it's not an instant fix. So we're going to incorporate some fasting. I'll do some little workouts here and there. We'll see how things go for a few months. And, uh, and that'll be it.